Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Tyler Edlin and this is Brush Last Sitter, episode 36. I have some more art tips and tricks today to help you get some movement in your uh, work and hopefully make it not quite as stiff. All right, so today we'll be looking at a lot of concept works from even uh, Earl, if that's even how you pronounce his name, I'm probably messing that up. But he's a, a classical kind of Disney type of background painter, and he uses texture and shapes. And just to give you just a little, little overview, that, that's who I'll mostly we'll be looking at. So here's another great one. It's some nice rolling hills. We can, I think this, this style that he has really lends itself rather obvious to, to looking at these examples this week because you can see the movement. We can see the flow and our eye just keeps moving in and around this image. There's, and there's just places to um, enter it. There's places that we can exit, but it, it kind of creates a very kind of circular type of motion in this, this painting always to keep our eye movement and basically keeping our interest. Here's another great one that often, uh, the, with the more recently uh, Frozen movie, they were really inspired by some of his original works, such as this one, when they were developing the look and the feel of the film. But again, this is as simple as it may be, having a really flat, straight horizon with a bunch of vertical trees. It still has a, a good amount of of movement and rhythm to it, kind of, and it's and it is that the, those kind of keywords of rhythm. We have shapes kind of repeating, um, different things. Uh, staggered throughout the image we have straight lines we have more organic lines we have we have rounded forms we have straight forms it's this variety uh, that that keeps us interested this this unity with variety um, is a, a term i like to say it, it variety is the spice of life and it really does help us uh, stay interested as a viewer in your scene we the last thing we want to do when we're creating artworks and, and designs is just lose the viewer's interest immediately and they're they're on to the next thing so yeah just keep the, some of these tips in mind when you're when you're trying to design out your scenes because that's exactly what we have to do as artists we're not only we're, we're drawing and we're, uh, we're painting scenes but everything needs to be designed the composition the lighting the shapes the form the you know the flow of it itself uh, we have to keep in mind everything to, to really keep uh, that that strong visual sense of pictorial space and making that pictorial space interesting uh, so here's another great example again keeping basically kind of uh, sandwiching uh, hard and hard edge shapes in in between organic and more rounded ones and of course, that, that really helps us create a, a nice sense of variety. There's overlap and there's scale, all these important things. All right, here's another great example of that. We have the uh, the rounded forms of the trees, again, kind of contrasted with the hard and angular man-made shapes of the barns and the structures here. And this kind of kind of look like this. We have these shapes, these sweeping lines are keeping us up. You know, things are moving us back down and back into the, everything is keeping our eye in the composition and to the more important aspects of it. All right, here's another simple one, you know, a nice vertical piece. Same thing, we have a nice uh, play of shadow and of light. Uh, the forms are reading, of course, very clearly. And there is that sense of movement. Again, we have the shadows kind of pushing us up. We get to the we get to the wall, these lines are pushing us up and over to here and then out of the canvas, back into the canvas and then back down. And there's just a constant, constant sense of rhythm and movement. And it, and hopefully, you know, if, if, if this type of video is kind of what you're interested in more, maybe slide based things as well, let me know. Uh, subscribe. We'll, we'll keep covering this sort of thing. Okay, here's some concept art from um, the Peter Pan movie. Same thing in here. We can see some of the more obvious shapes. We have the sky pulling us down. We have the rhythm of the islands pulling us back through. And it's just such a nice sense of balance. And that's ultimately, I think, what we want to create in a lot of our art is that sense of balance while keeping things moving and basically entertaining the viewer. Here's another one. I believe this yeah, from this is, again, another piece of concept art from uh, Peter Pan, a much closer shot. Uh, but still very, very nice, very, very pleasing aesthetically, I would feel. And here you could see a lot of just uh, down to the individual elements into a scene. We can push, we can pull and use them to move. Uh, and it's, again, 
not every piece has to be in an in-your-face circular type of composition. That's not often the first thing I think of this, but you know, when we take two more seconds to look at it, yes, it's it's kind of there. We can the scene's kind of vignetted by the background elements, and we have this nice space in the foreground as well as a very strong kind of focal point. So things can be sometimes the more nice things to to kind of observe are the more subtle. And lastly, we have this other one again of his his famous kind of angular barn shapes sandwiched in between all these nice organic patterns. And that that's how at this point I begin to see a lot of things in it's just in terms of patterns and breaking up the you know the space and how we can arrange them. Uh, very interesting stuff. This one gets a little more complex in terms of we have a, three to four different varieties of shapes, but it's the repetition of those shapes that are key into uh, the key kind of factor to making something feel unified. If you just had one element or two and it's in there and it, it's not repeating, it'll either stick out awkwardly, it'll draw too much attention to itself, maybe it's competing with a focal point. So just always remember keeping things repeated, keeping things even subtle, using big, medium, and small, using overlap, using implied and direct lines. All very important kind of ingredients. And I, I did whip up an example ahead of time. It was a demo for one of my design classes this week, but uh, the same thing. I, I, I take, uh, let me blow this up. Again, for like, kind of like the last tip or takeaway from this week's video is, uh, you probably won't get the composition you want the first try. Get your references, understand, you do draw overs, as I mentioned last video, uh, figure out what's kind of happening in them, how you can take them to your own. Start off with a few thumbnails, refine them, revise them, copy paste, mission match, you know, just Frankenstein your own designs so you can work out the best possible solution for what you're trying to show. And often it like, as, as we can see here, it really took me six tries to kind of get where I was going with that. And yes, it's very much a trial and error uh, sort of process. And the, the finished one ultimately, well, not even the finished one, but the, the value comp that I was working up for it, again, ended up something like this. A little bit of a work in progress, but it's it's nearly there. Uh, and as I noted earlier, I do have... What? Uh, yep, here we go. It's all about this little sky pirate bar that I painted here in the background. So I tried to design all the movement and the rhythm within the scene to kind of bring us right here ultimately. No matter where we look first, I ultimately want to bring us to there. So I designed every shape and every kind of contour within and throughout the scene to kind of bring us there. It's just one example of how we can take it and you know apply it to our work. So thank you guys for watching this week. I'd like to take a quick uh, moment to just apologize for the lack of consistency with releasing these videos. This time of year is absolutely <laughs> the hardest to kind of stay on a very specific schedule in regards to this, but I'm doing my best to keep delivering you fun and hopefully engaging content. Let me know what you guys think in, in the comments, of course, and in terms of what you want to see more of i would do like would you guys be interested in seeing more specific reviews i have bookshelves of art books would you guys be interested in in me kind of giving previews of those and what i think of them and what i recommend uh would you be interested in seeing more artist interviews would you be let me know what you guys want to see in the show and i'll do my best to integrate it in all right thank you Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please leave me a like. If you want to help me out, please share it with your friends. I'm also on Facebook where I have a subscribe button where you can get newsletters and discount info. I'm also on Twitter where I update and post images almost regularly. If you want a chance to mingle and meet other like-minded uh, individuals such as yourself, join the Brush Hosh community. Free and open to anyone, of course, through the Google+. Plus. And finally, if you'd like to inquire about my mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab, scroll through, read over some of the guidelines, and feel free to check out uh, several of my testimonial videos on my YouTube channel itself.